Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm looking at the Kerbal Space Center. With a few augmentations thanks to the Curb Inside mod by Alpha Ash. Now what this does is of course it adds a whole bunch of static locations, much like Curb and City, uh, but uh, our Kerbal Town was the original mod and the Curb and City was somewhere off in that direction and added a whole bunch of things to fly around and crash into. But this uh, this adds more in the way of launch sites. In particular, if you go to the tracking station, you can actually see the potential launch sites marked on the map. We have stuff in the polar launch facilities, the North Pole biodome. These are all great places to explore, and I'm not going to show you every single one of these. Evercrest, Phillies Spit, Kraken's Belly. You can see that some of these are set up for aircraft, and some are set up for rockets. So uh, yeah, you're just going to decide which ones you want. What's this? This is Dundard's Edge. That's a that's an interesting one because it sits along the edge of a little crevasse which you can fly along and have all sorts of fun trying to pretend that you're Luke Skywalker at Beggar's Canyon back home. Philly's Spit. That's a place to go. Well anyway, let's uh, show you how this actually works. And we'll get to some of the other uh, features that I want to talk about. So, going into the into this uh, to the vehicle assembly building, sorry, the space plane hangar, we can grab a regular FAR Firehound, which is the Ferrum Aerospace, uh, one of the default planes. And of course, by clicking this icon, you bring up the list of locations you can start at. Now, for aircraft, you'll have rocket pads. They don't tend to give you those for uh, aircraft. You have runways, which are obviously what you want if you've got a horizontal takeoff vehicle, and helipads for things that are capable of vertical takeoff. And other is interesting because some of these are for rovers, some are for boats, and some of them are for seaplanes if you are so inclined. Uh, you can also have uh, air locations that are currently in the game are here as well, right? The vehicle assembly building helipad. We have. The lost, where is it? The, the the KSC Island airstrip and the old KSC runway. Let's try the old KSC runway. Okay, here we are at the old KSC runway in my Firehound. These the models on these are pretty good, although the textures they've they've limited themselves to a very small number of textures, simply because they don't want the thing to completely explode the memory usage of this. Now, uh, if you're building spacecraft, you have to be concerned about launching from higher altitudes, you know, which is something that both Russia and the US have to contend with, that if you launch from high altitudes, then you're going to find that, you know what, I'm going to find that my uh, flaps are slowing me down and making it very hard to fly this thing. Let me just take my flaps up. There we go. That was a bad plan. No, that should be better take out the landing gear and we can fly this. Thank you. Got to be careful not to stall it there. I think that was a bit of a stall. There. Which brings me to the other thing I wanted to show you is, see this? Minor stalling here. Minor stalling means that not all of the control surfaces are stalled or they're not stalled very deeply, right? But it doesn't mean that all the control surfaces and all the wings are stalled. So sometimes it can be useful if you can know which one is stalled. And of course you can find this out by right clicking and you can see how stalled these are. There you see it tells you the percentage stalled. But that requires you to right click on all these things to get these parameters. It'll also tell you your current drag. You can see that the nose has a lot of drag, for example, because it's on the front and it's the first thing that encounters the air. So it's going to be the thing generating your supersonic shock Mach cones and all that. Anyway, uh, a better way to do this has been provided in recent versions of Ferrum Aerospace. You have the Aero Visualization tab. And you can, for example, click on Tint Stall. And you see that red? That is indicating that that wing is stalled. So what I've done is I've say, managed to turn the aircraft too much and that wing is not behaving correctly. It's inclined too hard or too great a degree into the airstream. And as such, it is providing less lift and much, much more drag. If you have a lot of drag, it is a bad situation to be in. So you want to try and restore this by getting your aircraft velocity vector lined up again with the airflow. And typically, 
Typically they teach you, I would imagine, to point down and help gravity accelerate out of your, uh, out of your stall. Although if you're close to the ground, that may not in fact be possible. Now the other ones that are available here are coefficient of lift, which is very similar. It will show you generally which pieces of your aircraft are producing the most lift. And that will almost certainly tend to be the wings when you're turning hard. Uh, the coefficient of drag, well, very similarly, you'll see the drag is high on the nose because that's the first thing that comes through. But if you stall the aircraft, those stalled areas will also have extra, extra drag on them. There, you see, I've generated a general purpose deep stall and I now need to recover from it. So throttle up towards the ground and see if I can get some control in this. Uh-oh, that's not good. Pointing the wrong way here. See if I can somehow pull out of this. Ah, my yaw is gonna kill me unless I can get out of this. Come on! Not good, not good, not good, not good. Yeah, I am totally boned here. Let's put the landing gear out. You never know what, what way you'll land. <laughs> I, I almost put it down on the landing gear there, but I think I was going a little fast to save myself. Okay, so for my next location, I'm going to try a helipad, and this is the, one of the VTOLs I built in my tutorials, if you remember. People asked how it would fly according to Ferrum Aerospace. Well, let's calculate the stability derivatives, and that is a lot of green, which is uh, pretty good, I guess. We'll, we'll find out, to be honest. Let's uh, close this up and pick a launch site. Now, Philly Spit is between a couple of mountains. I'm not sure what else there was. Evercrest, Hearthland Peak. Ooh, that looks like an interesting one. Mount Snowy, the Misty Cliffs. Yeah, these are all interesting locations. But the one, Dundard's Edge, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is a training facility for mountain climbing and white river rafting. Well, I'm going to fly down that river with a plane rather than a whitewater raft. And here we are at Dundard's Claim or whatever. We're going to try heading over to that valley there. Let's enable these, enable brakes, and uh, enable my turbojet as well. And ideally, as soon as we get off the ground, we're going to start moving forwards. Uh, there we go. Now the trick... Oh, why is this thing wanting to nose up? I don't want it to nose up, because if it noses up, then uh, I will start to slow down and I will lose control of it, right? Because these things are designed to fly forwards. In fact, ideally, I want to be nosing the thing down so I pick up speed. There we go. Once transitioning from horizontal to vertical, uh, vertical to horizontal can be dubious under Ferrum Aerospace. That's one thing I have found. Okay, well, let's bring the nose up just a little. And now I'm really starting to move. I should try and turn this into a an aircraft rather than a vertical jet flying type aircraft. Ah, there we go. Okay, so now we've got some ground beneath us. We'll throttle up. And now, now that we've actually got some forward velocity, these flaps are stopping me actually immediately going up. So that's actually pretty good. And with these, uh, with my, um, flight indicators, it means I can actually see where I'm going pretty well. So let's turn off this and immediately I turn off those vertical engines and my nose starts to drop. But hey, look, we're below 100 meters. We're flying through a canyon. Normally, getting to this canyon requires flying for, you know, an age over the over Kerbin. So very few people actually get to fly aircraft down this because it just simply requires such a lot of effort to get here. But with Kerbin side, you can actually get here pretty easily. It's just a shame they didn't put an actual runway next to it so that you could do this. Or it'd be nice to have a runway near some other, you know, natural structures to fly through. Now, as far as I know, Kerbin side doesn't actually let you launch from other planets. Although I know that Kerbal Town actually had the capability of putting stuff on other planets. So we can always hope, perhaps, for the ability to launch from a Mars base. Yeah, this is pretty good. Let's take a look at just how big this place is, right? There we go, flying through the valley. 
And that will keep going for quite a distance, assuming I don't crash into the side. Uh, you can fly as fast as you like. This is kind of slow because it's only got the one engine. I've flown through it down here at like, you know, 300 meters per second. And it's, well, it's twice as fast, which still isn't very fast. It's not exactly Beggar's Canyon back home material. Anyway, let's move on to another location. I'm going to show you one other trick. Okay, so Area 110011 Runway, right? This is by Alpha, Ash, and Ravenclaw... Claw, Ravencrow, sorry, not Ravenclaw. I'm thinking Harry Potter here. Uh, it's basically Area 51, because 110011 is uh, what 51 is if you convert it to binary. And this has a 4.8 kilometer runway that's 95 meters wide. So it is exceptionally huge, and therefore it's good for testing this next feature. Okay, so we are out at this huge runway, and the reason I'm out at this runway is because I want to demonstrate this uh, this weather feature developed by Silver Fox. It's currently a mod. It has all these tabs for wind, rain, and snow, and other things, but uh, the thing that I'm most wanting is the wind. And actually, you'll see that I'm bringing my flaps up because the flaps on this thing will kill me if I let them. They quite often have made my aircraft unflyable. Okay, so I'm just moving above the runway. Let's bring up some wind and see if I can set 20 meters per second of wind. Excellent, and that is coming from the west. So you immediately see that it's pushed my velocity vector off. So let's set a different direction, northeasterly. It's going the other way now. So now your dreams of flying these, uh, you know, trying to land aircraft in crosswinds, now you can do it with this. Or you can simply build giant land yachts or whatever using sails and things like that. It only works with Ferrum Aerospace. It will not work with stock Kerbal Space Program. Also, 20 meters per second of crosswind will probably kill you, but five might be doable. I'm not really sure. Northeasterly is... I think that actually might be across the runway a bit, I'm not really sure. But I'm going to try turning around and trying not to stall this aircraft. I wish I need to drop off a little bit of my velocity here. You know what, so what way am I facing? Actually, northeasterly, that implies that I'm more or less moving into the wind. Let's set southeasterly wind, there. So if it's coming from the southeast, then it should be blowing me across the runway unless I'm completely failing to read my directions. Um, does that, that doesn't seem to be working so much, but God, I just can't seem to make my velocity go down here. Let's, let's deploy these flaps just a little, see if I can use them to slow me down. Oh yeah, deploy my landing gear and immediately you'll see this thing just goes nuts. These, these are supposed to be flaps to help me, but they don't help me at all. Okay, let's try landing. Come on, just a little. And there is, should in theory be a little bit of crosswind here. Okay, brakes. Brakes a little, brakes a little. Come on, running out of runway, running out of runway, running out of runway. And we're still running out of runway, and... Yes. Well... Um, you know, the real Area 51 runway probably doesn't have that at the end of it. <laughs> oh, seriously, uh, this design, the fire, the Firehound or whatever, is really not well equipped to attempt these kind of landings. <laughs> because the landing gear is so small. But yeah, uh, you can do really crazy with it, things with this. Yeah, in theory, right, what we can do is get this thing flying and once again put these flaps away because the flaps will probably make my plane unflyable. I'm not really sure why, but they do. Uh, so yeah, you can set crazy levels of wind if you like, but let's get into the air first, right? Because getting airborne means we can now do silly things. So let's set 30 meters per second and set. Okay, wind is blowing northeasterly, which is, yeah, if I point my plane that way, it wants to blow me across the runway. Yeah, I think I was actually getting blown along the runway. Perhaps I completely messed up. I'm I'm perhaps not reading my nav ball particularly well because that says northeast. Uh, so th I think I thought northeast was behind me. I'm confused. Maybe this thing is just completely wrong. 
<laughs> Maybe he's not got his coordinate systems correct because it is an alpha and that seems to me like it's blowing um, from... If it's blowing... Yeah, it's... It, that's the northwest it's blowing from or, or it's blowing towards... That doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, well, never mind. Uh, whole point was you can embrace the Kraken by doing silly things like this, right? You can set your velocity really high. Let's throttle this thing up. Let's add another 100 meters per second. Whoa, and another. And things start to get really silly. 400 meters per second. <laughs> oh, wait, we knocked off a bit of our aircraft. Well, we'd expect that. We're really probably exceeding the airframe limits because we're progressively building up speed which we simply can't match. We're going to go into orbit like this if we keep this up. I'm just adding the speed relatively slowly because if you don't add it all at once, I will probably destroy myself. Uh, yes. What does it say? Tint stall. Eh, coefficient of lift. <laughs> I'm not sure this wind speed thing works correctly, but I would really like it to win uh, work. So let's uh, set that again. 900. 1000. Yeah, we're gaining altitude as well. It's certainly not blowing upwards at that speed. And we're about to lose this. So let's set my speed to about 1200. 1500. Now we're higher up, we can afford to do that. Oh, yes. Okay, now you know what we need to do. Set this. <laughs> Let this thing blow me up to orbital velocity, right? Let's let's hit 9. It's over 9,000, actually. It's exactly 9,000. There we go. Picking up velocity. And, oh, yeah, look. We, it's telling us exactly where we're going to land. But just watch as the, as the wind carries us further and faster than ever before. Well, actually, I think we've gone so high that the wind is now... I've now lost... I've now lost the aid of the wind. So it doesn't let me do this. Let's uh, time skip and fall back into the atmosphere and see if we can skip off again and harness the power of this wind to put me into some sort of escape trajectory. Or at least prevent me crashing into the ground. Set that... Uh, Let's let's make it nineteen thousand. <laughs> it's telling me large angle of attack and side slip. Yeah, you don't say because we're falling down into the atmosphere. There's my G forces going up. What's gonna happen here? My velocity vector. Look at it. And it's about to start taking me upwards again. Yes, there we go. Off, off. Finally escaping this planet with the power of wind. Yeah, uh, I really would like this mod to actually work a lot better. <laughs> um, because it seems to me that it should work in theory, but every time I try it, it doesn't quite work. Nevertheless, the developer deserves respect, and I uh, should muck around with it. Until uh, the next time, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.